Wuthering Wave's combat system is nothing short of amazing so far. From the developers of Punishing Grey Raven, Kuro Game takes to the action open world genre with their own twist. I've been a longtime player of PGR in the background without the burden of creating content, and if there's one thing that Kuro Game took from their previous game into Wuthering Waves, it's a unique combat system and fast paced fights. This guide will hopefully teach you everything you need to know about Wuthering Waves' combat system to get you hyped about the game. Without further ado, let's get this guide rolling. Like many other games, characters have elements in Wuthering Ways. The six elements present in the game are fire, ice, lightning, wind, dark, and light, but these also have their own in-game terms which are fusion, glacio, conducto, aero, havoc, and spectra respectively. I will refer to these elements by their proper names for the rest of the video, so take your time to remember them now. Once you take the battlefield, there are five different attacks you can perform with the normal attack button. Each character has their own string of normal attacks as well as a heavy attack, plunge attack, evasion attack, and a parry. Heavy attacks and plunge attacks consume stamina from the player's stamina bar while evasions refund stamina from dashing if timed correctly. It should go without saying that evasion attacks only happen if the player presses the attack button after a successful dodge while heavy attacks require you to hold down the attack button and plunge attacks require you to attack midair. Parries can be triggered by any damage from the player's active character, but most often you'll time the parry correctly with a simple normal attack. You'll know when an incoming attack can be parried when the enemy has a yellow circle on their model, but that doesn't mean if you attack any time it's visible, you'll get a parry. Instead, this yellow circle just serves as a sign that you have the chance to parry and should pay attention to the timings of the attack and respond by pressing your attack button at the right time. Larger enemies and boss enemies have an extra gauge under their health bar that is reduced every time you land a successful parry. Once these gauges are depleted, the enemy will enter a stun state where you're free to DPS the enemy down without worrying about dodging. As for the first beta, there are some concerns that these stun states are too long and too rewarding for players, so that's definitely something to keep an eye out for as more beta tests and the release come along. Resonator skills are another foundation of Wuthering Wave's combat system. You can probably infer that a character has a unique ability that can do a variety of things, whether that be deal their respective elemental damage, heal the party, etc. There's no resource for using skills aside from cooldown that limits their usage, and landing skills generates a hefty amount of resonance energy for your ultimate. Resonance circuits is one way that Wuthering Waves adds depth to every character, making them feel fresh and different. Each character has a resonance circuit above their health bar which can be a gauge or bar unique to their kit and usually a full gauge or bar can be consumed to grant buffs, enhanced attacks, or completely new modified attacks to combo with. You're going to have to do your own diligence and read the character talent pages to find out how to charge your favorite character's resonance circuit and what the character can do with a full resonance circuit gauge, but I'll give you one example to illustrate things. Take one of my personal favorites, Dong Jing for example. Her resonance skill doesn't have a cooldown like other characters, but instead it consumes some of her HP and then slashes once to deal havoc damage. This leads us into the main skill expression of her kit where she can execute special combos with her basic attacks plus her resonance skills to quickly fill her resonance circuit above her health bar. Danjing can combo two basic attacks into two skills in quick succession to fill a chunk of her resonance circuit, or combo three basic attacks into three skills in quick succession to fill her resonance circuit in one go. Successfully executing these combos and filling her resonance circuit allows Danjing to launch an enhanced heavy attack that deals havoc damage instead of physical damage and also heals Danjing to make up for the health that she consumes when using her skill. Resonance circuits are huge for skill expression and damage maximization, so definitely take the time to learn the ins and outs of how each character's resonance skill ties with their resonance circuit. The fancy in-game term for a character's ultimate is resonance liberation. The amount of energy that your character has will circle around the ultimate icon in the UI, and once the circle is full and begins to pulsate, your resonance liberation is ready. Like any other action RPG combat games, your ultimate will provide iframes for a brief moment as you watch the flashy animations, so you can definitely use your character's ultimate strategically to dodge an attack. As I mentioned before, resonance skills generate a decent chunk of your energy to cast your ultimate, but landing hits with any of your attacks will slowly generate energy as well as QTEs which we'll cover right now. If you've played games like Punishing Grey Raven or Honkai Impact 3rd, you're familiar with the QTE system. 
In Wuthering Waves, QTEs are referred to as Concerto Skills. Your character's Concerto Skill is a powerful switching attack that allows you to keep up DPS while switching characters and generate more resonance energy for the character entering as a result of doing damage. In order for your switching to be a QTE instead of a normal character swap, you must charge up the Concerto Energy Bar, which is located to the left of your health bar and is independent of the resonance energy required to cast your ultimate. Just like Resonance Energy, this bar also charges up when dealing damage, whether that be through your attack combos or skill. Each character has their own Concerto Energy Bar, and when you QTE, the character that switches out consumes their Concerto Energy. If the character switching in has some of their bar already filled up, that energy is not consumed, and they can continue building up that energy from where they left off last time they were on the field. Now that you're familiar with the elements and the Concerto skill QTE system, that gives us the foundation to go over Concerto effects which is the most complicated part of the combat system directly tied to your characters. Think of Concerto effects as elemental resonances based on the pairing of elements in your party, and certain effects will take place based on the element pairing of the characters switching out and in with QTEs. In general, several different pairings of elements will give you the same effect, so let's briefly go over all the combinations that will net you each unique effect in battle. Starting off with what the game calls Concerto Effect Ensemble, these are your combinations that involve the four main elements of Fusion, Glacio, Conducto, and Aero. Within the category of Concerto Effect Ensemble, you can get a 40% damage increase to your attacks, resonance skills, or resonance liberation depending on the specific QTE combos. A QTE between Aero and Fusion or Glacio and Conducto results in a 40% damage increase to normal and heavy attacks. Meanwhile, a QTE between Aero and Glacio or Fusion and Conducto results in a 40% increase to resonant skills. That leaves the last two combinations of Fusion plus Glacio and Aero plus Conducto to give you a 40% damage increase to resonance liberations. All these buffs last for 12 seconds upon switching and immediately disappear when the active character switches out, meaning you'll need to trigger another QTE to get these buffs started again. Next up we have what the game calls Concerto Effect Legato. Concerto Effect Legato is a fancy way of describing adding in the dark element Havoc into the equation. When combining Havoc with any of the four main elements of Fusion, Glacio, Conducto, and Aero, you get a 20% increase to resonance skill damage that lasts for 15 seconds. This may seem weaker than the Ensemble Concerto effects I previously described, but this buff is preserved when switching out and it also further increases by 20% when doing so. This is perfect for characters that generate Concerto energy fast and like to constantly switch in and out. Of course, after adding Havoc into the equation, we also have to add Spectra into the equation, which is the light element in the game. Adding in Spectra gives us what the game calls Concerto effect sustenance. When combining Spectra with any of the four main elements of Fusion, Glacio, Conducto, and Aero, you trigger a time slow in a small field around your character and instantly restore 10 Concerto energy to the character who consumed energy for the QTE. Again, Spectra is an element that complements constantly switching plus fast gameplay with an enemy time slow and a Concerto energy refund for more QTE uptime. Now you know what Havoc and Spectra do with the regular elements, but what happens when we pair the two together? Well, Havoc plus Spectra gives us what the game calls Concerto Effect Duet. Spectra and Havoc are a pretty broken combination because they give us a 20% increase to all elemental damage for 12 seconds, which is a pretty universal buff that's easy to utilize. Last but not least, we have Concerto Effect Unison. Concerto Effect Unison describes the combination of two of the same element, for example, Fusion plus Fusion or Havoc plus Havoc. Triggering a QTE between characters of the same element simply deals an extra instance of damage in an area around the character, where this damage type is respective to the element of the characters in question. Outside of that instance of damage, there are no special buffs or effects that come with Concerto Effect Unison, so these are definitely the least complicated Concerto effects to understand. And before we end off the video, let's briefly touch upon Echoes. I haven't gotten the chance to really play around with this system that much, but Echoes are essentially a fresh take on a gear slash artifact system in Wuthering Waves. I'm not going to talk about all the farming and layers of RNG of these Echoes because it is a little bit off topic and long winded for this video, but there is a combat application that is core to your everyday gameplay. First off, to collect these Echoes, you simply defeat enemies and bosses in the overworld to absorb them in your Resonance Terminal, which is one of your key items relevant to the story. 
Once you absorb the Echo of a Monster, you can equip it to a character's main Echo slot to give them an extra skill in battle. Depending on the Echo, this skill can have you transform into the monster and control them to launch an attack, or simply summon the monster and have them launch an attack independent of the player's control as if they were a pet. Echo skills are able to generate Concerto energy for QTEs and Resonance energy for ultimates, so farming Echoes in the overworld and equipping them to your characters are something to focus on in conjunction with leveling up your characters. With that, let me know what you guys think of the Wuthering Waves combat system down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this guide or thought it was useful, be sure to support both the video and the channel. You can follow me on Twitch, Instagram, TikTok, or sub to the YouTube channel, whatever people do nowadays. Other than that, it's the same as always. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.